Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm still doing extended tests of the M3 Pro. And this time I compare it to a Legion Pro 7i running Resolve. And we also, as you saw earlier, did the Blender test. So you can pick this up at Micro Center for $24.99. Has two terabytes RAM and also 32 gigabytes compared to what you get at Apple for the $23.99. And we're just gonna be taking a look at how Blender and Render <laughs> ring does rendering with resolve that is um so let's talk about the methodology i have a quick time running on um the macbook pro and then obs is recording the screen so that's how i get the multicam setups and then later i turn it off and then i have the iphone recording in the back and we're just gonna be taking a look at how the gpu performance does with ray tracing on and off and for some reason my <laughs> Uh, watch is connected and made the screen go out but yeah let's take a look at the results right now first i want to talk about the mac pro which is the m3 pro with 18 core so if you see anything wrong with the methodology let me know but i remember from last time testing you have to do gpu compute and then we go to the preferences uh, and was just double checking how it worked and turning metal rt off i uh, previously ran it just to get the settings pre-run because sometimes when you load it it takes a while to actually render um, or load all the stuff i wanted to have a run with all the things loaded so skipping ahead in the video and seeing the complete bar we could see at the top left of this video from the screen recording that the time of the gpu was one minute and seven seconds and then i of course set up the same parameters with the gpu running on the 4080 and skipping ahead we could see what the results are there on the windows machine so yeah, comparing two similar priced machines, we get one minute seven versus 27 seconds. So that should be, um, you know, as expected, perhaps there's some more GPU tuning that Blender could do, but um, maybe we'll see more optimization with the GPU caching or something. Um, but yeah, the next test will actually use the in beta metal rendering and um, I'll skip ahead to just showing the results and we could talk about um, how they both perform. Just getting a little into the methodology, when you go into preferences, you could turn on Metal RT, which is experimental. And then from what I remember of doing render, you go in and you choose Optimix, and that's how you get these results. So um, yeah, a bit of improvement in the Metal RT, and it seemed the same for the Windows machine. So remember from years ago, people roasted me about having OBS. So I remembered and I turn off OBS and the QuickTime and we rerun. And what I'll say about this as I kind of go back and forth between the laptop and the MacBook is that um, I'm going to leave the volume as it is default when you put it into Final Cut. So you're going to be hearing the volume of both the M3 MacBook, which is non-existent pretty much, and then the RTX um, and so I'll say about these devices, it, it all depends on what you want out of the device as um, I'll just let it like render and have this overlay. Um, so I believe that this rendering is already finished and then this one is still going. Um, but that, you know, the RTX is a, uses a 3330 watt brick device, which is um, kind of heavy and it gets loud as you could hear. And, um, you know, if you're just in it for performance, yeah, you could optimize, you know, trading off weight, travel, portability. Um, I mean, there's other better, lighter laptops from this Legion that, you know, could serve a purpose, getting like RTX 40, getting the slim models. Um, if you're trying to get like a all-in-one light laptop, but for the M3 Pro, um, I still found it performing behind the laptop in terms of just pure gpu performance so after i did all of that i'm speeding through i actually took both videos put them in resolve um, so i have the screen recording the iphone recording and then the quicktime recording i loaded them onto both devices and resolve was actually unable to make a multi-cam so what you're seeing here is me manually editing it by the audio to try and get it set up um, so i could show you how multi-cam editing performance does and then I, of course, do the same thing on the Windows laptop. So after I get that all set up, the aim was to just showcase how the timeline scrubbing performance does. All right, so let's just talk about, from what I remember, I had my LaCroix. Um, so yeah, this was recorded maybe an hour or two ago, and now I'm editing this on Final Cut. So I want to say that 
uh, maybe resolve is pretty optimized from a scoping perspective. I'd later do the object tracking and that's where I saw a lot of slowdown on the M3 Pro. I'll get into that later. But, you know, visually what I'm seeing on the video as I'm editing this and making a voiceover and what I kind of remember doing simultaneously, um, I've never had any issues with the RTX 4080 and the M3 Pro from my testing and Resolve seem to be well, doing fine as well, editing multi-cam. I later set up the camera to try to get like a better recording video or edit angle of it, I can't even speak. Um, but yeah, 60 frames per second on both of them, clicking through, it, it probably instantaneously loads. Um, and then scrubbing through, uh, you can kind of, I mean, this is basically just like three 1080p things running. I know that Apple advertises like being able to support multi 4K. So basically nothing to exchange and expect there. So if you guys are familiar with Object Tracker, this is something I've actually used. So I think this is actually a good test for people's workflow in Resolve. So basically in Object Tracker, you could make a strike through of what you want to track. And I did that in both instances. So after you do that, you hit the forward backwards and it tracks the person. Um, so yeah, you can already see there that the RTX 4080 finished and I was actually confused. I was like, what's going on? I thought it, I forgot to click it, but I actually did click it. And it's just taking that long on DaVinci Resolve. Um, perhaps there's some kind of uh, optimization they need to do to use these new M3 like dynamic caching. Um, I wasn't exactly sure, but yeah, this is person to person tracking, um, trying to verify the same results. And I mean, basically, I could run circles. <laughs> I was I ended up like while Google while it was still trying to track like Google searching, like is there some kind of like setting I forgot to do on the M3 Pro? Um, because basically, yeah, this is done. I'm playing it back. I I think I'd literally like make another strike through by the time this finishes and and render it again, um, while the M3 Pro is still kind of just chugging along. Um, so I'm pretty sure I had the settings right, but if someone knows like a way or maybe something I might have missed, it, it says I'm using like metal um, and the right rendering. I basically, try to find the settings, but yeah, um, let me know in the comments. But uh, it's it's really slow. If this is something you do in your workflow for object tracking, uh, the M3 Pro is not that great, and I haven't really seen anyone talk about it on like previous devices like M1 Max or M2 Max or M2 Pro. Um, but it could be something worth investigating if this is something you do in your workflow. So yeah, I'm not too familiar. I've never, when I've had the previous devices of the M2 or the M2 Pro or M1 Max, I never did object tracking, so I don't know how it did before from a personal standpoint. Um, but yeah, I turned activity monitor on and you can see it's like, it is using the CPUs and GPUs. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind if you have this in your workflow a lot is that, um, I mean, this is, I, 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 make sure I use the right clip. Like it's the same time period and everything. It just takes longer on the M3 Pro. The last thing I want to talk about, and I've guess I've seen comments on this is that, yeah, hitting render at the same time. Um, I, I mean, you could hear the fan noises and I'll make sure to, uh, like basically all the audio you're hearing is straight from the iPhone. This voiceover has been voice isolated in final cut. Um, but the, Render times are actually pretty good on the 4080 and they're respectable, I suppose, for, for a 10 minute 1080p video um, that was a multicam. I don't know if that affects export times or how exactly that works, but this was basically one angle of multicam with the object tracking um, in Fusion that should basically already be there, but you can basically see, um, yeah, it's, it's loud on the 4080. But uh, that's what happens, I guess, with the i9 and kind of showcasing some of the temperatures of what it hit, um, getting up to 86 on the, I don't know why my temperatures are different here, but I believe it's 80 and then 55 or 70, one of those, I don't even know, um, on the uh, on the <laughs> RTX 4080, while the M3 stays really quiet, no fans can't hear it or anything. Um, so yeah, RTX 4080, I guess the point that I want to make as I go into closing is that like these are the same price machines. I got this one actually cheaper than the M3 Pro. It was one nine 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 because it was open box. But if you buy it today at Micro Center, it is two four nine nine. Comes with more RAM and an extra terabyte of SSD. Meanwhile, that this one was finished, it said that there's still a minute thirty waiting on the device. So. Overall, I mean, it's kind of stuff I've showcased like years ago. 
on the M1 Max versus the RTX 3070 actually on the Zephyrus. There's a trade off here, right? Now I have a 4080, it's like three pounds heavier, 330 watt brick, that's pretty heavy as well. Meanwhile, um, I got the M you could have an M3 Pro, weighs three pounds, pretty light, the comfortable in gaming. I mean, one could say, hey, look, I'm able to go in the background and eat some noodles while it's finishing. While, like, I guess the thing that people always talk about in some of these videos is like, oh, it's render faster. Like, or people like really working on, I mean, I don't work in the industry. I'm making the YouTubes as like a hobby. Um, so, like, yeah, I think there is some people who like need to render if you're in the professional workforce. But I'm not exactly sure why they get a MacBook because, you know, what's been said before and what i'm showcasing here is that rtx 4080 runs faster runs games without gpt toolkit better if, if you wanted a lightweight device honestly um just look into like the amd devices with their uh their new like integrated graphics cards you get like the 7080 and it weighs like three pounds so that's my take on kind of just as i make yearly videos on macbooks let me know what you guys else want to see thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next one peace